Elite Eights across the state and for the final time this season, welcome into Friday Night Hits. I'm Mark Whiteman. Thanks as always for joining us. 12 upstate teams kicking off in quarterfinals. Historic in its own right for JL Man. First time they've been this far since 2001, hosting a Hillcrest team coming off a thrilling overtime win over Burns. It's our Sparrow Financial Game of the Week. It did not disappoint. Chase Justice has the highlights. It's rematch time here at Slayton Field between a pair of regional rivals in the Hillcrest Rams and the JL Man Patriots. Except this time, it's winner go home with a spot in the Upper State Finals on the line. Now these two teams met just three weeks back down in Simpsonville, with the Patriots narrowly escaping with the win. After a scoreless first quarter, the Rams are on the move, and Caleb Sutton takes it in himself from three yards out to get the second quarter going, giving the Rams a 7 to nothing lead. But JL Mann is on the move after a bad snap in the red zone. Ethan Anderson rolls out to find big play Mikel McLennan for the score on the broken play to tie this game up at seven apiece. The ensuing possession for Hillcrest, Avery McFadden, a Mr. Football candidate in the state of South Carolina, doing what he does best, getting behind the defense and breaks this game wide open for Hillcrest to give the Rams a 13 to seven lead. The Rams would take that lead into the half, but after an explosive third quarter, JL Mann leads 21 to 13. Late in the fourth, Hillcrest down to one last push towards the end zone until senior corner Jaden Booker comes away with the game ceiling interception, earning the JL Mann Patriots a berth in the upper state final for the first time since 1984. State championship, man. That's that's the next deal. Practicing on Thanksgiving, you know. Me and my wife, man, we prayed about this thing. This is something that we've always wanted, and uh, God answered prayer. Now the JL Man Patriots are starting to reach heights never before seen. With this win here tonight, they'll now have to face the winner of the Gaffney Indians versus Dutch Fork Silver Foxes game in Greenville. I'm Chase Justice, WYFF News 4 Sports. Chase, thank you. We'll get back to 5A in a bit. What a win for JL, man. Greenville always finds a way to play their best ball late in the year. They started 3-3, three and three, but they carry a six-game win streak into Rock Hill against the favorite in 4A Northwestern. The Red Raiders reached the 4A Upper State Finals last November before falling to Northwestern in a heartbreaker, and this was some kind of game. Mazio Bennett, direct snap. Yes, sir. Raiders open the scoring 7-0 Greenville. Game tied at 14. 20 seconds till halftime. Finley Polk to Tadarian Knox. What a snag. The Trojans go on top. 21 to 14 at the half, right down to the wire. Greenville down 28 to 27 in the fourth. Bryson Drummond to Keontae Mosley across the middle. They're not going to catch him. Mosley gives Greenville the lead. It's a two point conversion it is good. They now lead 35 to 28. But here come the Trojans. Pull to Jalen Burris. Northwestern pulls within a point 42 to 41. Going for two to win the game. Polk to Cameron Vance. No good. And the Red Raiders storm into Rock Hill and up end Northwestern 42 to 41. Well, you know, this is my third time with this program being at this step, and we feel like it's time for us to get past this step right here. But we're going to enjoy the victory tonight, the bus ride home. Um, we're just going to keep plugging away and representing Greenville County. I think we're really improving as a program, and hopefully tonight this was an example of showing people how much we've made progress. Wow, what a win for the Red Raiders. Third straight upper state final for Greenville on tap next week. In 3A, a postseason rematch at Belton Honey, a path between the Bears and Red Devils of Clinton, who ended BHP season in the quarterfinals a year ago. BHP undefeated this fall, just the seventh time they have reached the third round, the third straight quarterfinals appearance for Clinton. Very first play of the game for BHP. What should they do? Give it a three. That usually works. Marquise Henderson, his 33rd rushing touchdown of the season from 40 yards out. 7 0 BHP. Clinton's on the move in the second. Tyshawn Richardson. And he is not going to be stopped. He's heading towards the pylon. Dives. He is not quite in. Down to the one yard line. They tie it up on the very next play. Red Devils. Again, Richardson going deep this time to Zay Johnson. And Johnson coming back toward the pylon. And he is pushed out of the one. Clinton would take a 14 7 lead on the very next play into the third quarter. BHP trailing 14 to 10, but not for long. Henderson, special, special athlete. Bears battle back for the lead 17-14. Now it's 20 to 17. Clinton needs an answer, but Richardson picked off by Jakari Anderson. There's no one around him. A pick six for Anderson. BHP, they'll still be playing football on the holidays. 
Those guys had a phenomenal. They really got after it. You know, we got to get another running back healthy. He didn't play tonight. But just super proud of Belton Honey Path High School, the school, the program, and I'm proud for my coaches as well. It's my 28th year, and it's pretty special to get to play on Thanksgiving Day. So 27-24 win for BHP, now 13-0 this season. But the road to the 3A title, it still runs through Central. Daniel 48-1 since the start of 2020, taking on Chester in front of the best student section in the country. Tori Shaw waltzes in, makes it 14-6 Daniel in the second quarter. But the Cyclones, they're hanging in in this game. Chester's trooper Floyd, he's going to keep it on the option. He's in, cuts the Daniel lead to two, but it's only a matter of time before the Lions would get bubbling. Later on in the game, Colton Chapman Going to find Jason Bish across the middle and the Lions. Well, they're still on the hunt. 49 to 20 over Chester. They'll face BHP next Friday for the 3A Upper State Crown. The last seven 5A titles sharing the field in Irmo. Six of those belong to Dutch Fork, the reigning champs, but their only title game loss in that time came in 2021 to Gaffney. So for the third straight year, the powerhouse is meeting deep in the playoffs. Silver Fox has started two and five, have since reeled off five straight, including a road win over T.L. Hanna last week. Gaffney's got the 7-0 lead in the first. Dutch Fork, Ethan Offing, he's got to take it himself. The 17-yard score ties it at seven. Ensuing drive, Gaffney's Riley State, and he's got a gulf of green space about him. He's got a blast 60 yards inside the 10-yard line. But Gaffney wouldn't be able to finish the drive with any points. They would miss a field goal. Second quarter now, same score. Gaffney's Jake Spadabecchia hits a 23-yard field goal. Gaffney goes in front 10-7, but it is all Silver Foxes from there. Offing calling his own number again. That usually works pretty well. Silver Foxes take a 14-10 lead, and they pull away en route to a 35-10 win over Gaffney. Dutch Fork will face off against J.L. Mann in the Upper State Finals next week. We're hitting halftime on this quarterfinals Friday night hits. Once again, a special thank you to all our area coaches that wore the wire for us during this regular season. And for the final time this season, it's in their best of Miked Up from 2023. Tells you if you want to defer. Hey, put the chicken in the microwave. Man, it, he was wide open, wasn't he? You never heard cover your knees before? Every time you look back at him, they're going to throw a flag on us. Be smart. Hey, hey, come here. Great throw. Not bad on the comeback. You got him in a good position. Hey, look good snap. Just a little bit. Just try to get a little bit faster. Let's go get it. Let's go. Good work. The four amigos. Good work. Good work.